This is now question 6.2. So we're given a circle. They tell us that VR is the diameter. I'm just looking for any other important part. P is the midpoint, but we can see that over there. And what else? RS is the diameter of the smaller circle. So that's a, the diameter of the smaller circle. Okay, so 6.2.1, give a reason why OP is perpendicular to RS. Okay, that's just because, remember the very first theorem we learned in grade 11 was that if you have a circle and you have a line from the center that is to the midpoint of a chord, if those are the same, then this is automatically 90 degrees. So we can just say here, line from center to the midpoint of the chord. Question 6.2.2, prove that triangle ROP is similar to the green triangle, which is RVS. And so the first thing that I identify is that the two angle R's, can you see that they are the same? They will be common. So we can say that angle R is equal to angle R, and that's just because of common. Now, we know that this angle here is already 90 degrees. We've already, we've already shown that, or we've already been we've asked that in question 6.2.1. So we can say that angle P2 is equal to 90 degrees, and that's already been proven. Now, if you look at the green triangle, we've got a diameter over here. And remember that a diameter always makes a 90 degree angle on the circumference of the circle. That's the angles in a semicircle. So we can call that angle VSR. So angle VSR is equal to 90 degrees, and that's because of angles in semicircle. So therefore, angle P2 is the same as angle VSR. So this is great because if you've watched any of the previous videos or maybe your teacher's gone through this with you, when you are proving two triangles similar, you only need to find two of them yourself because the third one is always the same because of the angles, the sum of the angles in a triangle. So in the pink triangle, we have not used O2. So we can say O2. And in the green triangle, we have not used angle V. So we can say that that's equal to angle V. And that's just because of sum of angles in a triangle. And so therefore, we can say that triangle ROP is similar to triangle RVS. And that's just because of angle, angle, angle. Great. And so that's six point. 2.2 complete. Question 6.2.3 would now like us to do another similar, similarity question for three marks. And it's RVS and RST. So we have to try to prove that they are similar. So once again, um, angle R is the same for both. So we can say angle R is equal to angle R, and that's common. And then once again, they're using the whole 90 degree thing. So what we can see is that in the pink triangle, we know that this whole angle is already 90 degrees. But now in the smaller triangle, we know what well, they told us. Remember earlier, they told us that um, R S is a diameter. So it means that the corner angle that it makes, which is this angle here, T1, that must be 90 degrees. Let me just take away these lines so we can actually get a nice idea. So T1 is 90 degrees. So let's quickly say that. T1 is 90 degrees, and that's just because of angles in semicircle. But that's now working in that smaller circle. And so that's it, guys, because now we found two angles. And so the third one is always the same because of sum of angles in a triangle. So in the pink triangle, we did not use V, so we can say angle V. And in the little green one, remember this was the little green one over here. Let me just show this again. 
we did not use, uh, we used R, we used this one, but we haven't used this one over here. So that one would be called RST. So we say RST, and that's just some angles in a triangle. And so we can say, therefore, triangle RVS must be similar to triangle RST, and that's just angle, angle, angle. Lovely, guys. So that's all done. For question 6.2.4, I need to know from you, have you done Pythagoras before for grade 12? There is a Pythagoras theorem in grade 12 Euclidean geometry, and I'm going to explain this question in two different ways, for the students who have done that before and for the students who haven't. I'm going to start with the students who haven't because I feel that that's the mo that would be the most pe um, amount of people in that category because for some reason some teachers just leave it out uh, because it usually happens at the end of Euclidean geometry. So ST is over here, okay, and then we've got VT and then we've got TR. So, and then ST is squared, which means that they're using that twice. So what happens is that they're probably saying that these two triangles are similar to each other, and that is how they are able to get ST twice. Okay, for those of you that have done Pythagoras' theorem, you can go straight ahead and get your answer. But I'm first helping those students who have not done Pythagoras' theorem yet. So what we're going to have to do, and, and I looked at the memo of this exam paper because I was very curious as to which method they used. Um, and they went and used the method where you don't use Pythagoras' theorem. But when you do use Pythagoras' theorem, I don't know why it's five marks, because it's so quick. Anyways, so I think this paper was written in April, and so at that point, maybe students, um, it was it was a Mpumalanga paper, maybe they hadn't done Euclidean, the, the, the um, Pythagoras' theorem just yet. So we're gonna prove that these two triangles are similar. So we have to tell the teacher that, because they didn't tell us which triangles to use. So we're going to say triangle STV and triangle, uh, what's that green one, TRS. By the way, when you tell the teacher which triangles you're working in, the order does not matter. The order only matters when you say at the end, um, this triangle is similar to this triangle. Then the order is very important. So we already proved earlier that T1 is 90 degrees. That was proven. And that's because it was an angle in a semicircle. Uh, T2 is going to be 90 degrees because of angles on a straight line. So we can say that T2 is 90 degrees because of angles on, no, you don't have to say straight, just say angles on straight line. Okay, so those two are then equal. Now here's the part that might be a bit weird because you technically need to have uh, done this in class with your teacher before to understand what I'm about to do. But let's say, for example, this was x, okay? Then what would this be? Well, that would be 90 minus x. You can maybe pause and just think about that for a bit. Then, if I look in the big triangle, if this whole angle here is 90 and this is x, then this corner angle is 90 minus x. Once again, you might have to pause and just think about that for a bit. And then if you had to work out in this green triangle, you would find out that this is x. Now this is something you'll learn when your teacher does the Pythagoras theorem with you. But the point is, is that um, we can say that angle v, angle v is equal to angle, um, to equal to this one over here. And so that one would be TSR. Okay, and then the third one, we can even just use angles in a triangle, um, but we can say that angle R is equal to um, angle S1, and that's just, we can say, some angles of a triangle. Okay, and so there we've proven, we can now say that they, these two triangles, so triangle uh, STV is similar. Now make sure you get the order right. So we know that angle S in the green, no, in the pink triangle, is the 90 minus x, so that goes with angle R in the green triangle, and then angle T in the pink triangle goes with T in the um, green triangle, and then angle V is x, and that was this one over here, so that's S. And so that's just gonna be angle, angle, angle. Should put a little triangle there. And so now we can make those ratios, so we can say ST over RT is equal to TV over TS, and that's equal to SV, and then that would be SV over 
R S. I don't know why that's a different color. Okay, and then what happens, it's quite easy, we're nearly done. We can see that there's ST there and ST there. And then there's a VT and a an RT. And so we just take those. So we can just say ST over RT equals to TV over TS. And then we can cross multiply until we end up with um, ST squared equals to VT multiplied by TR. And so there we've done it. Now, for those of you that have done Pythagoras' theorem before, then it's even easier. What you guys would do is the following. Um, remember that in Pythagoras' theorem, we need to look out for situations like this where you've got a 90 degree triangle and then you've got a line going from the 90 degrees to the opposite side at 90 degrees. And that is exactly what we have here. We've got a 90 degree triangle and then we've got a line going from the 90 degrees hitting the opposite side at 90 degrees. So there are three different options that we now have when you when you have a situation like that. You can say that this side, for example, which is SV, um, so SV squared, and if you haven't done Pythagoras theorem before, um, go, look at, go look out for my video on that, I have got one. And so we can say that SV squared, for example, is equal to VT multiplied by VR. Now, as I said, if you haven't watched this before, you wouldn't really know what I'm talking about right now, so don't feel discouraged. Um, you obviously, if you haven't learned it, you haven't learned it, okay? So, and then the other thing we could say is that RS squared is equal to RT multiplied by VR, and then the last thing we can say is that ST squared is equal to uh, VT multiplied by TR. These are all from Pythagoras' theorem. Now look at this, the last one is exactly what they want us to do. So I don't know how we're going to get five marks. Um, they will give you five marks, but as I said, I don't think the students in Mpumalanga had done Pythagoras' theorem at this time. So there you can just say it, and then the reason is quite a long reason actually. You have to say line from right angle vertex perpendicular to the hypotenuse. So we've got a line coming from a right angled vertex, a vertex is a corner, hitting the um, hitting the, the hypotenuse at 90 degrees as well.